Hey guys, back again. Now, a couple of days ago, I attempted to contact a private investigator. I rang them twice. They said they'd call me back and never did. Well, last night, I finally made contact with them and we messaged each other back and forth. Now, before finding this company, I researched online. I wanted to make sure that they specialised in a few areas and had a good depth of training. Uh, the person that I got through to was actually the founder and director of the company and he's been in the game for over 30 years. He's an ex-policeman and um, yeah, he was, he was quite generous with his time. I have no reason to believe that I wasn't talking to the person that he said he was. I don't think my phone was intercepted. Um, I've shown a few friends of mine the company, you know, the name, the number, to just to verify that it's the real deal. But I'm not going to um, plaster it all over the internet, of course. I'm not going to dox him. Okay, so this company was first founded in 2014, and they specialise in surveillance, locating people, circumstantial investigation. They also specialise in services such as forensic phone examination, technical surveillance countermeasures and counter surveillance. I was lucky enough that he was prepared to text me, so here is our direct conversation. Okay, so I first ask, are you aware of the gang stalking program in Australia or what a targeted individual is? He responds, yes, I believe so. It is someone being targeted by a group of people for a specific reason. I've got to add, since the last question, I am buzzing hard like I've just been plugged in. I now feel completely electrified sitting here. Anyway, I then go on to ask, you are not aware who would run such programs? He responds, I know that there are a few charities that assist victims. However, gang stalking is a technique used by perpetrators to harass individuals. It can be used by numerous different groups. The technique is designed to intimidate and make someone feel paranoid. So he knows the basics and he knows the terminology. I then respond with, that's correct, but it's far more sinister. The texts are a little out of sync here. I then ask, are you aware of secret societies participating in such programs, i.e. the Freemasons? He responds with, I have not come across that in any of my cases as yet. I'm sorry it's all scrambled, but I'm firing out questions before he has time to answer. He then says, I've been approached by others who believe that it was happening to them. I ask, how many people have approached you roughly? He then says, enough for me to look into it. I then ask, you are not aware of Freemasons conducting illegal activities? He responds, I have been come across it or aware of any instances of Freemasons using this technique. I don't know if this is uh, just gobbledygook to uh, skip to the next question or what. I then say, how can you operate without the people involved threatening yourself? I was getting at, how can I be sure that you're not compromised? He does not answer this question. He goes on to say, I know that gang stalking is a way of avoiding the charges of stalking. As to be charged with stalking, the prosecution must show a course of conduct therefore more than one occasion, so it is harder to prove. I then say, yes, it is elaborate and compartmentalised on purpose. There is a lot of plausible deniability, to be sure. He then goes on, very hard to prove, and most allegations of gang stalking get fobbed off on mental health and paranoia by the victim. I say, yes, I understand. I was set up with a knife due to paranoia, a bogus charge. I then ask, is there a way for an individual to remain safe, say a trust? Not your specialty, I know, but this is a slow-kill torture program. He then says, it depends on the individual and the mental state and the support available for them. I understand, I reply. He then adds, it is extremely hard to find conclusive evidence due to the time and resources required to run a counter-surveillance operation over the time required to identify the perpetrators and then investigate how they are connected and identify the group of organisations. I add, yes, I understand. The scale of this program is immense. 
I then ask, if the feds or a fusion centre were involved, is there a legal way to expose, cease and desist? He replies, the first step would be to seek support for the stress and mental health suffered as a result of the belief of being targeted by group stalking. Next step would be to conduct a details risk assessment on the victim in an attempt to identify a reason or purpose for the stalking and try and identify a group, organisation, through research and cross-referencing the victim profile. If after these processes show a likelihood of being targeted, then we would look at deploying our covert resources in an attempt to build a profile on the instances of stalking and individuals involved. I then ask, these mental health workers are chosen by your firm? He replies, no, we would seek recommendations for healthcare workers with relevant experience for the nature of what the victims are experiencing. I then say, OK, I thank you for your time. You have been more than generous. This is something I am very much considering as the evidence mounts. He then says, you are welcome, Wayne. Good luck and stay safe. I say, thank you. OK, verdict. This man, of course, was a little sheepish. He expertly dodged a few questions. He kept it at the stalker level. He himself didn't want to get into the compartmentalised hierarchy and he certainly didn't want to mention secret societies. Now it is his job to know, you know, surveillance and intelligence inside out and I dare say that he'd know more on the topic than you or I. Having said that, I think he was offering sound advice and keeping me grounded. No matter the money or the resources, you're not going to be that guy that brings down the men at the top. The best outcome in this scenario, I believe, would be to convict boots on the ground. Maybe the contracting agency, a few dirty cops or ex-military. Whether you're targeting ends, that's another story. As for his references to mental health and paranoia, I totally understand. Not everyone's of sound mind, people lie, and of course he has to profile the target. But for those of us that have been through it and due to adversity have incredibly strong minds, we need to hang on a little longer. We need to wait till this becomes a little more mainstream and a little more accepted. You are currently seeing it be made more mainstream as they control the narrative with Havana Syndrome, a name that really bothers me as they're making out it's a new phenomenon, whereas we all know this has gone on for decades. Anyway, at this point in the game, any exposure is good exposure, I guess. Lastly, I want to say that this video is not meant to discourage anyone. This is just one conversation that I've had with one private investigator. I urge everyone to keep gathering evidence, keep documenting, and keep exposing this program. But as for me, this isn't an avenue that I would pursue at the moment. All right, guys, I love you all. And keep fighting. Bye.